Hi, I'm Steven, and I'm a level one chef. This is a store-bought sauce that we're looking for. Hi, I'm Beth, and I'm a level two chef. I really don't think that if you're eating pizza, you need to worry about a diet. Hi, I'm Frank, a chef at the Institute of Culinary Education, and I've been cooking for 24 years. Of course, you gotta have garlic. It's Italian food. It's funny because I come from an Italian-American family. My grandmother did not like garlic at all. I'm Rhoda. I'm the video food director for Bon Appetit and Epicurious. Bon Appetit! Yeah. Come on in, Rhoda. Yeah. Do you think that one's tangier? Starter. And I'm Rose. I'm a food scientist. My pizza always gets soggy at the center. How do I keep my crust crispy all the way through? Hmm. A couple of ways to solve this problem. Make sure you roll out your crust just a little bit thicker. And it's really, really easy to roll out. <laughs> it's not working. Your oven is turned up as high as it will go, hopefully 500 degrees. Use a low moisture cheese. Also, if you are able to preheat your pizza stone or pan or whatever you're using, that will help as well. Let's start with the pan. Are we using a pan with those multiple holes like I used in the video? Because that could be the problem right there. I made most of the pizza dough for the entire season of making perfect pizza for Bon Appetit. I know everyone's making sourdough bread right now, but that experience making pizza dough for months and months made me never want to do it again. To fold. Or not to fold. I fold my slices. I'm like a New Yorker. I fold it in half and eat it like that. You get the little oil dripping out the back, so good. Chef Frank, I think he might fold. Rhoda? I'm gonna say Rhoda is not a folder. I'm definitely a folder when it comes to New York City style pizza. Steven, I'm gonna go fold. Depends on where you are. If you're at a fast food joint, the Pizza Huts of the world, fold that. Beth, I would say it's not a folder. It's not really a fair question because if, if you're a New Yorker, you have to fold. I do not fold my pizza. But if I'm in a super hurry, like I'll curve it a little bit so it <laughs> fits in my mouth. You gotta fold. Come on, folks. That's why you know I'm from Philadelphia. How about that? <laughs> How to get the perfect crust in home baking conditions. It all depends on what you mean by perfect crust. What do you want your crust to look like? I've always had a little trouble with making pizza at home. I constantly try it, I constantly change it up. I hope that you guys can give me some advice on this one. Crank your oven up as high as you can without it being dangerous, of course, and use preheated surfaces like a pizza stone or a preheated baking sheet. Why does the dough need to rise for making the pizza? Dough needs to rise because you're adding active dry yeast. yeast. If you don't let it rise, you won't give your gluten a chance to start forming. The yeast will give your dough flavor. Unless you want it to be a flatbread, you really need it to rise because you want that puffy edge on the pizza all around the sides. Well, it does for traditional style pizzas, but the fact of the matter is you can make a pretty delicious pizza with a non-leavened dough. You can make almost like a cracker type of crust. Um, so that's super thin and crispy. I don't really like pizza to be too crunchy on the bottom. Certainly letting the dough rise is gonna give you that, that, that softness that you like around the edges. Tomato sauce or canned tomatoes. I would suggest making tomato sauce from canned tomatoes. It's really, really easy. All you need to do, buy a can of tomatoes, Add some garlic, oil, salt, you're good to go. As a chef, people are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you use canned tomatoes. Here's the thing about canned tomatoes. Canned tomatoes are picked at the peak of ripeness, right? They might not make it to the market in good shape, so they pick them and they put them in sauce and they can them. So canned tomatoes for me are better than fresh tomatoes on pizza. I'm in the canned tomato category. Team tomato sauce, it already is prefixed. You don't really have to worry about it. You just have to kind of throw it on. And I'm in that throw it on mood right now. I'm tired. <laughs> How much sauce? Is the perfect amount of sauce. Jeepers, that's, that's hard. That's a hard question to answer. Another great question. You guys are very insightful. Really thought about your pizza. Hmm. 
I believe that you should only put enough sauce to kind of dress the pie. Always leave a little bit of an edge around your pizza and make sure that it doesn't feel too heavy. So you can actually lift up the edge a little bit. Make sure that it's not being weighed down by your, by your sauce. Because if it does, you're gonna get a very soggy, soggy, soggy pizza. And it's also gonna be more likely to burn the roof of your mouth if you can't wait to eat a piece when it comes out of the oven like I do. I like to use maybe a, ladle, a small ladle and just kind of spread it all over. I don't like a really saucy pie. I like more cheese. There's such thing as too much sauce. After the sauce. Do we put cheese first or topping first? I would say the right way is crust, sauce, cheese, seasoning, delicious. Good to go. I think it's nice to have a little bit of cheese on top of the toppings because it helps to hold them to the pizza and it just gives you a, more of a chance to have more cheese. So I would probably do sauce, cheese, toppings, and a little bit more cheese on top. You can get a pie and all you see is cheese. You gotta dig for the pepperoni. Nah, on top of the cheese, right? That's why you put it there. It's a garnish, cheese and then topping. That's it. Sauce, cheese, vegetables, the only way to go. You should put your dough, then your cheese, then your sauce, then your toppings. As far as my family is concerned, as far as I'm concerned, the pizza is fabulous. Ah, New York slice. Or Chicago deep dish. Only pizza is New York pizza. I can't show my face after I say this, but I must. To tell you the truth, Chicago deep dish pizza all the way. The Chicago slice, it is not pizza, people. It is a casserole. I'm totally a New York slice person. As someone who's lived in New York for almost 20 years, I gotta go with the New York slice. <laughs> Do Americans, oof. I think we need to stand together right now. Really put ranch dressing on their pizzas. Do Americans really put ranch dressing on their pizza? I have no idea. I have never actually seen anyone put ranch dressing on a pizza. I've never had ranch on my pizza. I wouldn't be surprised if Americans put ranch dressing on their pizza because Americans love ranch and Americans love pizza. Yes, Americans do put ranch dressing on their pizza, okay? Ranch dressing goes to pizza like pineapples go to pizza. I kind of believe you see ranch dressing where the pizza isn't all that good, right? The crust isn't good, it probably tastes like cardboard, so you need that ranch dressing to get it down, right? You get a good piece of pizza with a good crust, you don't need ranch dressing. <laughs> what kind of cheeses result in the best texture for a pizza? Mozzarella. 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 I apologize, my Italian is getting away from me. I've been locked up in the house. I mean, pizza is Mozzarella, sauce, pecorino romano, basil, that's pizza. Anything else is not pizza. Whoop. Next question. Which cheese would you recommend for lactose intolerant people? Bonus points if Emily gets her own segment on the subject. Follow your heart, I love Emily's segment. <laughs> I agree with you. FAQs, assemble. Okay, Emily, opportunity knocks. Emily, this is your chance to shine. I always wanted to try this, so Emily, Emily. Okay, uh, so go for it, Emily. Well, hello and welcome to my lactose intolerant kitchen. Here's the dealio. I like buffalo mozzarella and it is, uh, I think it's low lactose. I, I haven't had big problems with eating it. Also some of those super ripened, like older cheeses, like a super old Parmesan is also gonna be pretty low lactose because the age like helps break down the lactose in it. So if you can get like a real fancy ass Parmesan, go for it baby. And just keep your lactate pills on you and like experiment, you know, just try it out. I mean, what's your worst case scenario? A bad poop, right? All right, well, thanks for having me. Have a great day. Moving on. Next, what are your favorite non-traditional toppings? Uh, non-traditional toppings? I don't know. I love shrimp on my pizza. Fried breaded shrimp on top of pizza is really, really good. It's really good. One thing I got turned on to was a drizzle of hot honey on pizza. That's not something that I ever tried before, but I definitely have seen that trend happening in 
the Epicurious Bon Appetit test kitchen, and it's actually a really nice way to top a pizza. I, I, I'm a, a little more of a purist when it comes to this. I want it to be a pizza, not a flatbread. <laughs> Pineapple on pizza? Oh, there it is. I knew it was coming. Oh boy, this is this is quite the debate. Pineapple, no, absolutely not. Pineapple on pizza, no, definitely not pineapple. I couldn't even hammer this home any harder. Yes, yes, a million times, yes. I do like pineapple on pizza. Don't at me. For me, not really. I've been cooking for 24 years and eating my whole life and I've never had pineapple on pizza. I would like to... <laughs> Go to my grave without having pineapple on pizza. You getting fruits while you're eating something unhealthy. Why are you complaining? Just eat the pineapple. You're being lazy. I'm judging you. My director is shaking his head. I think I've lost some validity with him today. Can someone please break down the difference between wood, coal, brick ovens, and the different pizza results? Oh, that's a good question. This question is a doozy. I don't really know how to break that down for you. My man Frank is gonna have to take this one because you don't know say. <laughs> Wood and coal fired ovens tend to give you a more kind of like bubbly crust, whereas a gas oven would give you kind of a more flat kind of slice pie crust. Uh, but usually wood and coal ovens tend to be brick ovens. And that's everything? It's everything? Everything there is to know about pizza. Well, almost everything.